The Old Testament reading is Jeremiah chapter 33, beginning with the 14th verse. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will call a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's almost hard to believe that this season is upon us and next thing we know it'll, it'll be over. But we sit here and wait and wait, especially today, we wait because the Panthers don't play today. We have to wait to next week to see if they're going to go 12-0. and 0. No, we're in the season of Advent. We're in a time of waiting, of anticipating and hoping, and hoping for reconciliation of the world back to God's self. Waiting, it's, it's a concept that I think a lot of us struggle with, especially myself, and especially if you've ever ridden me, with me in a car in traffic. I, I just don't do well. I, I don't want those people in front of me. I want to go, and I want to get to where I'm headed. But the other day, I, I had to wait, and it was kind of self-imposed on my, for me. I was sitting at home, and I was like, I really want a good cup of coffee. And so as I was sitting there, I said, you know, I have my Keurig, and I, I even have my drip coffee maker, but I want something really bold and strong. And thankfully, a few months ago, my mom went to Cuba for a mission experience, and she brought me back this delicious coffee. So I didn't put it in the drip maker. I actually have one of those little pots that you put in the water in the bottom, and you pack the coffee real tight, and you just sit there, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait 13 minutes for this cup and a half of coffee. I don't want to wait that long for a cup of coffee. If I see 13 people in line at Caribou Coffee, I get irritated because I know the coffee's right there. All they have to do is pour, pull that little handle, and I have my cup, and I'm out the door, and I'm on to my next business. I don't want to have to wait long. I don't think any of us do. Does anybody here suffer from a little bit of impatience? Time for confession this morning. <laughs> you know, we, we live in a world where we don't have to wait for things anymore, right? Knowledge, food, information, and satisfaction are at our fingertips at any given moment. You want the answer to something? You go to Google. Well, even better now on our tablets and on our phone, we don't even have to type. All we have to do is say, hey Siri, what's the ingredient to whatever? Hey, Siri, what's the line on the Panthers game? Hey, Siri, this, that, or the other. Well, if we want food, we go to our phones, we go to our tablets, and we go to the Domino's app. I'm not really considering it food, but you know what I'm saying. It's quick. It's easy. It's right there. We can order it. I could order us all a pizza right now and have it to our homes. We're fine. We get home today. What about those groceries, those pesky groceries. Now you can have them delivered to your house because heaven forbid we go and stand in line at a grocery store and have to talk to that stranger behind us or wait for the cashier to hurry up. What about if we want that satisfaction, that delightful website, Amazon? All we have to do is go in and type whatever we want or ask, ask Siri to go to Amazon for us. And then the next thing you know, if you're a Prime member, two days later on your doorstep, you have that nice box with that paper tape, and you just go and you rip it open, and you have that quick satisfaction right then and there. Waiting. What does it even mean to wait anymore? It just isn't part of our life. It's just not part of who we are. We want to get to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. And I think, aside all these... My favorite new app, or it's not that new anymore, is called Open Table. I can go to the restaurant that I want. 
I can tell how many people that are going to be in my party. I can say what time I'm going to show up. Say it's 7.30, dinner for 4. I walk right into that restaurant at 7.29. They have my table ready. I go sit down, don't have to talk to the hostess. I just go right there. We don't wait anymore. It's all before us as quick as we want it. Waiting is for the birds these days, huh? But how are we as Christ followers, how are we as the body, how are we the ones who come and gather every Sunday waiting, hoping and anticipating joy, love, peace, grace, and mercy? How are we waiting in a hopeful and in a holy way? How are we to live differently in this hurried world that wants everything right here, right now? You know the tired story, don't you? Before Halloween is even over, Christmas decorations are out. Before, Valentine, before Christmas is over, Valentine's Day is here. Before Valentine's Day is here, St. Patrick's Day is here. It's just on and on and on. We rush we go to the next thing. We don't take the moment to be present. Maybe it's because our attention spans are shrinking at a radical rate. Maybe it's because we allow ourselves to get bored with the everyday of life and we need to find those new big shiny things to grab onto to get us to the next day or the next week or the next month. Whatever it might be, we don't want to wait. But as the body of Christ... We're called to wait, aren't we? We're called to be in the moments. We're called to be present with our neighbors. We're called, even I would say, to stand in those pesky lines at the grocery to maybe talk to somebody who's struggling behind us or in front of us. Just, just taking those intentional moments to take advantage of all the situations that we're in to be the presence of the body. Not to forego an opportunity to share a word of hope. Not to forego an opportunity to share a hug of love. Not to forego an opportunity to extend our hearts, to extend our hands, to extend ourselves. As we wait with people. As we wait in this society. As we wait in this, in this broken world. As we wait in this hurting world. You know, I think we get wrapped up in waiting for the wrong things. We get wrapped up wanting that new iPad. We, we get wrapped up wanting that new car. We get wrapped up waiting and wanting all these things that, you know, they're just going to turn to rust and moth. But w what about the holy things that we are called to wait for? The holy waiting and hoping that we are supposed to encounter this season of Advent. We shouldn't waste it away on worldly things. We shouldn't waste it away on where, how big the Christmas tree might be. We need to wait and sit around the Christmas tree and be present with our family. That holy waiting. Think about the situations in our world right now where so many people are just waiting. They're waiting with angst. They're waiting with hurt. They're waiting with brokenness. They just want a place of peace. They just want a place of love. They just want a place where they can grab onto just something. Think about what it might look like and what our world might feel like if we were a people actively hoping and waiting for the refugees to find secure homes. What might our world feel like and look like if we were a people actively hoping and waiting to properly educate all of God's children and schools that weren't segregated anymore? It's 2015 for crying out loud. There's no space for that. What might our world look like and feel like if we were a people actively hoping to provide secure housing for everyone instead of our brothers and our sisters living under underpasses and in the woods on these soon-to-be cold winter nights? What might our world look like and feel like if we were a body of Christ that said, you know, it's no longer good enough just to be in this spectator sport of coming to church on Sundays, but we're going to actually go and be out in the world, changing it, living differently, trying to identify where those people are hurting and how we as a body of Christ can compassionately walk with our neighbors. 
Think about the change that would come about in Charlotte. Think about the change in the spiritual development that would come about in our own church. Think about the change that would happen in our world if we were hoping and when we were waiting with these people, with our very neighbors, with our sisters and brothers who are hurting, who are wanting just maybe a hot meal. Maybe they have parched lips because they are thirsty. Maybe they have part souls because they're thirsting for the Spirit. And we could be the bearers of that. We could be the ones who enter into the world waiting alongside our neighbors, our sisters and brothers, bringing them the food, bringing them the Spirit, bringing them the love of Christ that they're so desperately wanting. But is it that easy? Is it that elementary just to think that we could just sit and hope for change? Or do we actually have to get up and do something? I think we all know the answer to that. So we have to get up and do something. We have to become active. We have to become mobilized. We have to seek ways and actually go out. Whether, whether it's something that's comfortable or uncomfortable, we have to find those avenues, we have to find those doors, we have to find those passageways where we're not going to just say it's okay to sit around and just pray. That's fine, but we have to take the next step, literally. We have to get out of our comfort zones. We have to take ourselves to where people are hurting and learn their names because I guarantee you, when you learn somebody's name, it changes the game. You have a relationship, you have a story to share, you have a story to tell, and they have a story to tell you where you can now relate to them. And we can walk alongside those who are waiting, waiting for injustices to end, waiting for heartache to end. I think that's where we're called to be this season of Advent. We're called to take those steps. We're called to take this light out into the world of the darkness and bear this light, bear the light of Christ and let people understand, let people know that they have a place here at Myers Park, that they have a people, they have a body of Christ who's with them, who's going to walk with them, who's going to meet them in the struggle, the pain, the hurt, and sometimes when they're feeling the, that hopelessness, that we're going to be a people who meets them where they are, that we're going to go out into this world facing those unjust issues and no longer stand for it, but instead speak up and be with our neighbors. Think about Jeremiah. Think about how fitting this text is for us as we enter into this season of Advent. And think about how fitting this text is and how poignant this prophecy is in the hurting world that we have. You know, he's, he's talking to a people who have just faced the Babylonian exile. They've been dispersed. They don't have homes. They don't have anywhere to turn. They don't even know who they can trust next. And Jeremiah just delivers this beautiful, beautiful prophecy of just hold on. Hold on to that promise. Hold on to what God promised us. Hold on to that love that God is showing us. Hold on to that grace that God is pouring over us. Just hold on. Think about the people in our world, in our community right now, who are just barely holding on. Barely holding on. And they're just waiting waiting for the body of Christ to show up, waiting for somebody to come and offer a word of hope, waiting for somebody to come and offer an embrace of love. Think about that. Think about where you could find yourself in this coming week, in this coming month, in this coming year. Think about how you can live differently in 2016. Think about ways that you can be the body of Christ, changing people's lives and dare I say, having your lives changed as well. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of brokenness. There's a lot of people just, just turning around, not knowing which way to turn next. But I'm willing to bet that if we as the body of Christ are willing to take those steps, willing to take the initiative to meet our neighbors where they are, they'll be able to know which way to turn next because they won't, they can't help but see the love of God through you all. Be out there for somebody. Think about the angst that people are living with. Think about the injustice they're having to deal with. Think about what people are waiting for. 
You know, there's many, many people in our own neighborhood, two miles away, one mile away, that just wait for, their day, for the day when their skin color won't dictate how people respond to them. There's many people waiting right now for an education that is fair, an ed education that's right, the quality of schools, where it's not going to be dictated with what neighborhood they live in. Many wait for the bus. Because you no, know, there's some neighborhoods here in Charlotte where banks are not in walking distance for some people. I mean, we have five or six right here at Myers Park. Many wait for the microwave meal to finish because they don't have access to quality food in their own neighborhoods. Many wait for the day to end where they are forced out of affordable housing for new high-rise apartments. Many people wait. Many people wait for things to end that should have already ended so long ago. And so it's up to us, I feel. It's up for us, for the body of Christ, just as Christ came and turned the world upside down as a babe laying in a manger, we have that same call on our lives to turn this world upside down. Not to stand any longer and accept the injustices, but to stand and be a voice for the voiceless. To reach out our hands and help somebody off their fallen selves. Just to be that body. Just to be the people that won't stand for it any longer. I guarantee you, everybody in here has met a time where they've had to wait for something. Maybe it's waiting to hear back from a college application. Maybe it's waiting to hear back from a job offer. Maybe it's waiting to hear back of how a loved one's test results came from the doctor. Maybe you yourself have waited for those results. Maybe you yourself are sitting on pins and needles in any situations. You're just sitting there. You're sweating. You're swearing. You're cussing. You're just hopeful for good news, for a good turn, for a hopeful journey where the healing will come. Think about that angst that you felt or feel in those times of just waiting. And you want somebody there with you. And you have somebody there with you. Now consider our neighbors who don't have anybody there with them. They don't have anybody waiting. They're just sitting there in the dark. We have a responsibility as a church to not let people sit in the dark any longer. To allow the light of Christ to burn inside of us. To help people realize the promise of the righteous one coming, to bring that love and peace and hope. Now, right now, I wanna invite you to do something so you get to participate in this sermon. I invite you to find a piece of paper or pencil or even on your smartphones, and I want you to write down something or somebody's name who's waiting, who might be hurting this season. Maybe you don't know somebody that's you know, it's not personal, maybe it's not yourself, maybe it's not a family member, maybe it's an injustice that's happening in the world. I want you to write that down, and I want you to commit for this whole season of Advent to pray, to pray for that situation, pray for that person that's waiting for these situations where so many are waiting. Commit to pray for that daily. Enter into that time. You know, faith formation did this wonderful thing where we ring the bell. There we go. And we enter into a time of prayer. Add this prayer to that time where you sit around in your silence and you pray and you wait for the Holy Spirit to change and redirect somebody's life. You know, as the body of Christ, we have to wait with active voices, with active hands reaching out, wanting to embrace our neighbors where they no longer wait by themselves. How about it, church? Can you wait with a neighbor this season?